Stuart Ray, when you hear the simplicity of the media and the punditry talking about this pandemic, what's the observation you want to tell us about this odd and unique virus? Well, it's great to be with you. And I, I have to say that we've learned a lot. And uh, the thing that I think we should understand is we have we need to use that learning. Uh, we know that vaccines are the factor that seems to be controlling deaths and hospitalizations in places where we have high vaccination rates. You look at Iceland, where they've had a big spike, but very few deaths. Uh, and then we also know that masks or actually respirators are a very effective thing that we've underutilized. Uh, and if we just use the tools that we have in hand, we could have a big impact on getting back toward normal. The, the, the hallmark of your work is the mathiness of it. Caltech over to Vanderbilt and that, as you know, these are all differential equations, smooth dynamic curves. Which of the curves is the greatest mystery to you right now? Well, I think that when we see the downturns in cases uh, and deaths in the UK and India when the Delta variant first came up, we have to wonder what caused that negative deflection after the big spike. And I don't think there's any chance that immunity was the reason for that. That's changing behavior. And I think we underappreciate how important behavioral change is. And when the shock and awe of a big spike happened, people start changing their behavior and we see it blunted. So we need to realize that we need to use that behavior strategically and we need to reinforce it by making sure that good uh, protections like vaccine and masks, respirators, are available to people everywhere they need to go. We need rapid tests to help blunt that uh, spread, and we just are not doing a good enough job with those things. Dr. Ray, are we ever going to put our masks away? Are we going to be wearing masks in perpetuity as we deal with an ongoing uh, COVID virus that remains in circulation? I think that we will be able to take the masks off much of the time in the future once we get to a point where we're sort of in a steady state and we have people protected against the severe complications. Right now, you know, we still have 20 percent of Americans over 65 who have not been fully vaccinated, and that's a big gap that we need to close. Uh, those people are very vulnerable. And now with the Delta variant, we're seeing more complications in younger people. So we really uh, are not at a place where uh, we can be surprised we need masks because we haven't done a good enough job with the first layer of protection, the one that lasts for months to years, which is vaccination. And the other side of this is therapeutics, how effective some of the tre these treatments are for the most ill from the virus. Drew Mattis of MetLife, an economist, actually was just on the show, and he had this to say that when we start talking about hospitalizations and not, not deaths, that's when we know it's over on a consumer level. How far away are we from talking only about hospitalizations from COVID and not deaths? Well, I think that uh, we're getting closer, but we can prevent those hospitalizations, which are really the step toward death uh, with more, better prevention. Uh, the therapeutics we have are effective once people are getting sick, but you know, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And when we have someone hospitalized, we're using re resources you know, you see the oxygen shortages in Orlando uh, and other places, and we know that we really are not in a place where hospitalizations are something we can discount. So the therapeutics we have are somewhat effective. We have some new ones that are probably going to come out that'll be a little more effective. Uh, so we have some things we can do for sick people. But what we really need to be doing is preventing those illnesses. And we also have to appreciate mm -hmm. there are a lot of people suffering long-term complications after COVID that we still have not really uh, gotten a good handle on. Dr. Ray, I know vaccines save lives, but actually are vaccines working the way they're supposed to if so many people still catch it, maybe, you know, less deadly, but still catch it three, four, five months after they had their both shots? Well, you know, vaccines uh, have multiple, multiple effects. Uh, one of them that is very hard is to keep the bug from getting on you. You know, we think about staph infections and everybody carries staph around on their skin. We can't, our immune system can't keep staph off of us. And I think it's worth thinking about the fact that this virus, when it's in your nose, is on you, but not so much in you. I don't know that we're going to be able to prevent those infections on us, but people who are vaccinated have the virus in their respiratory epithelium for a short period of time compared to people who are unvaccinated or not immune. So if we could get people uh, protected against the severe complications when the virus invades that epithelium and gets inside you, and causes the severe complications, we'd be in a better place. But uh, getting the virus to stop spreading really means getting uh, people to shed for shorter periods of time, mm -hmm. which means being immune, being vaccinated, 
uh, because vaccinated people uh, produce virus for shorter periods of time and they have fewer complications. Is winter dangerous because of further mutations that we could see? I think that couple of questions is right on point. Uh, this is summer, and we can expect things to be worse in winter. They have been in the past, and that seems to be the pattern. Uh, we also have to understand that the Delta variant is not a static thing. It's evolving. We see <clears throat> data from the UK and elsewhere showing that mutations are accumulating in Delta. It's finding new pathways. None of those have been a big jump yet. Uh, but I think we have to understand that unless we contain the spread of this virus, every time a person's infected, it's a roll of the dice. Those random changes that happen occasionally give the virus a big advantage. And as long as we keep on giving it those rolls, it's going to hit a number that is a bigger problem for us. We don't know that that'll occur. There are some constraints on the virus because it has to be able to enter our cells. It has a certain lock and key function that is constrained. But we've seen it change a lot. And, you know, where we thought we were in the spring before Delta really surged, uh, we mm -hmm. thought that things would be more normal. Now uh, Delta's right. changed that game.